my commandment that you love one another. This is my commandment that you love one another. Just as I love you. Hello, good morning boys and girls. Um, my name is Teacher Jeffrey and I'm excited this morning to share or to bring to you God's word and I hope that you are ready and you are settled well so that we can learn together uh, from God's word. But before we open the Bible uh, from which you're going to be learning God's word from, I want us to do this. I want us to pray. And do you remember what to do when we are praying? We do what? We put our hands together and then we bow our heads and we close our eyes and then we talk to Heavenly Father. So I want you to do this, to put your hands together, you close your eyes and you bow your heads as you go to talk to our Heavenly Father, our God. So let us pray. Uh, dear Jesus, uh, we do pray uh, this morning that you will help us to learn from your word. We do pray that you may give us understanding. We do pray that as you open your Bible, your, uh, your scriptures, that Lord, you may speak to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. I want you to, um, to look at the person who you are seated together with. Maybe it's your friend or you are, you are mommy or daddy or your brother. So um, some, whoever you are seated with and tell them today you're going to learn a very wonderful lesson that Jesus cares for us. I want you to turn to them and tell them that I want you to learn today that Jesus cares for you. And so we're going to learn that um, from a story in the Bible, from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 21 to 24. And then we skip again to verse two, uh, 35 to verse 42. And I want you to look in the screen and tell me the picture that you see. Uh, a picture of someone, maybe they, they're looking like this. They, are, they have their shukas and they are sleeping and they look hungry and sad and something is happening to them and that is a picture of oh Jairus daughter so you're going to learn a story about uh, Jairus daughter from the Bible and see what happened so boys and girls tell me have you ever been sick maybe you have a cold and you are you're sleeping you feel very weak you don't want to talk to people you can't even play you want to go and play but you can't because you're hurting and everywhere there's pain and you're wondering what can i do who can help me you hear your friends playing outside you want to go and ride your bike or play with your dolls and you can't do that because you are very sick and you are sleeping and you, you want to eat food and you can't eat because um, you are very sick. And so we learn from the Bible, uh, from that uh, chapter about this daughter, uh, Jairus' daughter. Maybe who would want us to call them? Maybe she was called Mary. Or what do you think uh, was her name? Maybe Jane or Susan or Sheila. Oh, whichever name. She could be having any name. So she was very sick. Um, and then she was sleeping. And then Jairus, uh, Jairus, who is the father to, to this girl, who, little girl who was sick, heard about someone called Jesus. And he heard that Jesus was doing miracles and he was doing amazing work. And then what he did is that he ran to Jesus. I want everyone to run. Can we run to where Jesus is? We hear that Jesus is far away. And then we run to where Jesus is. And then Jairus goes and tells Jesus, Oh, Master, uh, teacher, Jesus, you know what? I want you to come to my home because my daughter is very sick. She is sleeping. She cannot be able to do anything. She can't play. She can't go to school. She can't do anything. She's very sick. And Jesus, being a friend who cares for us, tells Jairus, yes, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to help 
uh, you by healing your daughter. So um, as Jesus was moving uh, and going to Jairus homestead, something terrible happened. Do you know what, boys and girls, what happened? Uh, something happened and Jesus delayed to go and Jairus' daughter died. That is very sad. So sad that she was so sick and Jesus was late and she died. So the people who were working in Jairus' home ran to where Jairus was and they told him that, you know what, stop disturbing Jesus because your daughter is dead. But Jesus, being a caring friend who cares for us, he, he turned to Jairus and told him that, do not be afraid, only believe. And Jairus uh, knew that, oh, Jesus is such a wonderful friend uh, and is going to help me. So everyone was like, oh, she's dead. There's nothing that you can do. But Jesus being a caring friend, he went to Jairus' home and he found that everyone in that home was crying and weeping and crying because this little girl has died and they don't know what to do. And Jesus told them and asked them, why are you crying? Why are you shouting and weeping? This girl is only sleeping. And people were like, no, she's dead. But Jesus said, she's only sleeping. And then he told everyone to go outside and remain with uh, um, the mother and the father of this little girl. And Jesus went to where the little girl was, uh, lying dead. And he took her little hand, held her, and then he told her what? Listen, boys and girls, this is what Jesus told the little girl. Wake up. And this little girl who was dead, who was sick, and then she died, uh, she stood up and sat down, and she started walking around. Maybe she was very excited that, ah, this Jesus who has come, I was very sick, I could not play, I could not go anywhere, and then he has come and healed me, and actually he has given me life again. And maybe she, we can imagine how excited she was. Can you tell me, what do you think you will do when you are sick and very sick, you cannot play, and Jesus comes and heals you? You'd be very excited, you'd be very happy, you'd walk around, you'd want everyone uh, to see that, to see that Jesus is this special friend, uh, his wonderful friend who can do anything. Let me tell you, boys and girls, he's such a friend like no other friend because he is able to care for us, for our needs, even the needs that no one else can do. And so we can, we can do this, boys and girls. We can trust Jesus. We can run to Jesus because he is a friend. He is our friend. I want everyone to do this and say that Jesus is my friend. I want to turn to the person that you are, are watching this and tell them, you know what? You know what? Jesus is my friend. And what you can do is that I want you every time you have any need, every time you are in need or you're sick or you, you're stressed or you are going through something, maybe difficult, you are you, you're weak and um, you're distressed, I want you to run to Jesus. Just like Jairus ran to Jesus and Jesus came and helped this little girl who was sick, you can know that Jesus is that special friend. And remember what we said, boys and girls, that Jesus is our special friend who can do anything. Remember what he's done. He has healed Jairus' daughter. He has even raised her from dead. What an amazing friend that we have in Jesus, that we can run to him. And how can we run to Jesus? By praying. Remember, there's a song uh, that we've been singing in church, uh, which says that, um, because we read God's word, we say, read your Bible and do it, and pray every day. And so the way that we can run to Jesus is by reading the Bible and then praying to him because he hears us. And so I want you every day learn uh, to read the Bible and then talk to Jesus in prayer because he hears you. He's a friend who wants to be close to you. He wants you to know him and to know uh, that he is a wonderful friend. Let me teach you one song and that you're going to sing about Jesus being a special friend who cares for me. This is how the song goes. 
Jesus is my special friend, special friend, special friend. Jesus is my special friend and he cares for me. Can you do that again? Uh, how the song goes like this. Jesus is my special friend, special friend, special friend. Jesus is my special friend and he cares for me. Or you can say, Jesus is my special friend, special friend, special friend. Jesus is my special friend and he loves me. Yes, Jesus is your fr uh, special friend and he cares for you and he cares for other person and he cares for me as well. And so we can run to him. Remember I say by reading the Bible and praying or talking uh, to him in prayer. And so I want us to do the memory verse uh, that tells us that uh, how Jesus told that we are his friends from the book of John chapter 15, verse 15b. I've said the memory verse is from the book of John chapter 15, verse 15b. And this is what the Bible says. Um, Jesus says that I call you friends because I've told you everything my father has told me. Let us do that again. Memory verse, John chapter 15, verse 15b, it says, I call you friends because I've told you everything that my father has taught me. So Jesus calls us his friends. And so we know that we have a wonderful and a special and loving friend in Jesus. So, boys and girls, we're going to uh, the next exciting uh, moment we we'll do our crafts. Um, and so I hope that you color them and make them as beautiful as possible. And to parents, if you do not have the crafts, you can download them from the Nairobi Chapel website or pick them uh, from Nairobi Chapel Gong Road um, and give them to your children to uh, enjoy this as you emphasize um, on this lesson. Remember on the craft, uh, there's a section uh, with, um, for you parent where you need to read and prepare to do discipleship to your children. And so we encourage you to do that to emphasize uh, on this lesson. And so boys and girls, it's been exciting and wonderful to know that Jesus is our friend. And remember I said that we can talk to him in prayer. And I want us to end this by going to him and talking to this amazing, wonderful friend Jesus through prayer. And remember what we do when you pray, we put our hands together, we close our eyes and we bow our heads and we talk to Jesus. So let us do that. Wonderful Jesus, we thank you so much because you call us your friends. We know through your word that you are a friend who cares for our needs. You are a friend who cares for us in our different situation. Even when we are sick, you are able to do everything and anything. We've seen you heal, even raise Jairus' daughter. And so we come to you with trust. I want to pray that you may help these dear boys and girls to know that you are a friend that they can run to, a friend that they can trust, um, even with their lives. We pray that you may help us to believe in you and to run uh, to you. Thank you because you are ever closer uh, to us in every situation and every circumstance of our life. We praise you and thank your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. Amen. It's been wonderful. So bye bye boys and girls. Um, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Bye. John chapter 15 verse 15. I you friends because
to 15 past 15. Good morning boys and girls. It's a beautiful morning that I'm super glad that we get to learn from God's word. My name is Chicha Jane and before we start, I think it's very important if we can pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word. We pray that even as we learn our lesson for the day, that you will speak to us and that uh, we'll understand and that mostly that we'll obey what you're teaching us this morning. So be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job, boys and girls. Now, last week you had a beautiful lesson and today we are going to pick from it. But I feel it's really, really important for us to go back and review what we learned last week. And our lesson was a follower of Christ grows a follower of christ grows that was week well it wasn't really week one but that was a follower of christ grows part one but today i'll be doing a follower of christ grows part two what did you learn last week you're looking at the the word grow can you spell it out with me g r o W, thank you. And that is the word that we will be looking at even today. We'll finish the, the two last letters of the word grow. Last week you covered two. And I want you to help me remember what did the, the, the letter G stand for? Good. I hope you said going to church. Why is it important for us to go to church? We go to church so that we can fellowship with other believers, but so that we can encourage one another. And the story you should have looked at is the story of the lion, okay, and a, an example rather of the lion. And the lion attacks the weaker animal, okay? And the reason why it attacks the, the, the weaker animal, because it's easy prey. The same way to the devil. The devil will look for you when you are alone, you've secluded yourself from other believers, and there's no one to encourage you. It's very easy for the devil to attack you and pull you down. And that's why we fellowship with other believers. And it's very, very important for you to remember that the church is not the building. It is not the place we go to, but the church is you and me. The church is when you fellowship with other believers. Wherever you gather, that is the church. Like today at home, that is the church. And that's why letter G, as we have said, go to church. And then you covered letter R. What was letter R standing for? Anybody? Thank you. Reading God's word and praying every day. Why do we read God's word? Well, it's so that we can learn what God wants us to know, we can learn more about God, and so that we know how to obey. You know, it's very hard to obey school rules that you don't know. If you don't know school rules, what are you obeying? You, you'll just live, maybe if you're a good person, you live morally right, because you know that it's wrong to steal and everything. But unless you know the rules of your school, it's very hard to obey what you don't know. So that's why it's very, very important for you to read God's word so that we can understand what the Bible says. But then it's very important to pray. Why do we pray? Because God loves us deeply. And if you have a relationship with someone, you talk to them, right? Yes, your best friend you talk frequently. That's how you end up being best friend because you do life together. In the same way, we talk to God because we have a relationship with him. It's very, very important for us to talk to God. And today we continue, we pick it from there and we'll be doing letter G-R-O. Letter O is what we are covering today. And it stands for obedience. What is obedience? You know, it's easy to assume that we all know what obedience is. Obedience is submitting to someone else's authority, okay? It's submitting to somebody else's authority, where you obey because they're in higher power than you are. And because you, you respect them, that's why you obey. And it's very important for us to obey God. And you know, you can't, as, as I have said earlier, you cannot obey what you don't know. So first we need to spend time with God by reading our Bible and by praying so that we know what to obey, okay? Then we know what to obey. And the Bible says in James 1.22, do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. You know, we can read our Bible every day. We can do our devotions faithfully. We can memorize our verses, but that's where it ends. If you're not obeying what the Bible says, the Bible says in James 1.22 that you are deceiving yourself. You are lying to yourself that you should obey what you read. And the Bible says that those who obey God's word are like the wise builder, the builder who built his house on the, on the rock. Don't be like the foolish builder who built his house on the sand. And when the wind came and the rains came, the house could not stand. 
that you will be like the wise builder who built his house on the rock. And when it rained and when the storm came, when the wind blew, the house stood still because the foundation was right. Because the foundation was? The foundation was right. As we have said that we should not merely only listen to what the Bible says, that we should actually do it. And I want us to read a story about Saul, who obeyed half what God said and thought it was okay, but it actually turned out to be disobedience. And our story comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, and we'll read from verse 10 to 23, okay? If you're home, if you're home with your Bibles, please make sure you have it and you've opened, then we can read together. It's easier for you to follow when you're reading it yourself. Let us read. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Saul was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, said Saul. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back Agag, their king. The soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder, the best of what was devoted to God, in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Wow. Wow. So Saul is sent on a mission to go and destroy the Amalekites. And he has a strong army, and he started out as a young person who didn't know much, but God gave him favor. He became a big king. So he's gone to war, and uh, God had given them very clear instructions that they were to destroy everything there, everybody that they find there. But guess what Saul does? Saul goes, fights, kills whoever he's supposed to kill, but saves the king and brings the king with him, King Agag. And then what his soldiers do, they save the best of the sheep, of the animals. They save the best in the name of that they are coming to sacrifice to God. They are coming to offer a sacrifice to God for victory. I don't know. I'm assuming maybe for victory because they are coming from war. It was a good thing. They were thinking, it was a good thought that they want to do it for God, but they had disobeyed God because God had told them to destroy everything and everybody, but they disobeyed. So it's very, very important for you to obey God, for you and I to obey God completely. If God tells you to go north, don't go northeast. No, you go north because God has said you go north. If God says you go south, you go south because God has said you go south. We obey God completely. And the last letter is letter W. And that is witness. Of course it had to be witness. And what do we mean by witness? Witness is telling about something you have seen, something you have experienced, or um, you saw it happen. Then you are retelling to somebody else. When you become a believer, when you invite Jesus in your heart and you have a relationship with Jesus, the Bible requires us 
to tell others about Jesus. To tell others about Jesus. And why do we tell others about Jesus? Because we are excited about what God has done for us. Because we, we have experienced God's love. We have experienced God's forgiveness. That we want everybody else to hear about Jesus. Who does the Bible say we should witness to? Everybody. The youngest child to the oldest adult are the ones we should tell about Jesus. Why, why is it very important for us to witness to other people? Mark 16, 15 says that we should go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. That we should go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. So the Bible is commanding us that we are supposed to evangelize and witness to other people. Who should we tell about Jesus? As Mark has said, all the world, which means, actually it says all creation. That means the youngest child to the oldest adult should hear about Jesus. And why is it important for us to share about Jesus? Because we understand and we know the love and the forgiveness we have received from Christ. That's why it's very important. You see, when something good happens to you, you are super excited to tell somebody in school, isn't you? Like, let me give you an example. It's your birthday and you got exactly what you are looking for, what you are hoping you are going to get. And you open the box and surprise, it's actually what you wanted. What do you do next, the, next, the next day you go to school? You let your friends know that you got what you wanted. Cindy, maybe it's a toy, it's a ball, I don't know. I don't know what you really want, but let's assume it's a ball. You go to school and you tell your friends, I got the ball. That day in the afternoon, you're the one who's playing soccer outside because you have the ball you've been waiting for. That it's easy for you to go and share the good news with other people. It should be the same. Because you understand the level of forgiveness that God has forgiven you for the many things that we, we have done and we still do. That we should be super excited to tell others about how God forgave us and that he is willing to forgive them and how God has loved you and that God still loves them as well. That's why we should be very excited to share about Jesus and that's why we are talking about witnessing to other people. What should you say to the person? Maybe you're here and you're like, but what should I say? What if I don't know how to witness? And many of us, even adults, I promise you, many, many people would say, I don't know how to witness to other people. I start talking and I run out of words. It's very easy. Number one, Tell them that God loves you. Jeremiah 33, 31 verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That God loved them before, even while they were still sinners, and even now he still loves them, and he will never stop loving them. That God loves you and wants to spend eternity with you. That he wants, he wants to, to have you for eternity, to, have, to see you, to have fun with you for eternity. And number two is that your sin keeps you away from God. Sin is anything you do, say, or think that separates you from God. That does not make God happy. That is what sin is. And because God is just and fair, he has to punish sin. And the punishment of sin, the Bible says that it's death. Romans 3.23 says that for all have sinned. Tell them that you know you have also sinned, but God still loves you. And because God has to punish sin, there's a solution for it. And that's why God sent, number three, his only son, Jesus, to take the punishment that you and I so deserved. That he sent his only son to die on the cross. Did he deserve it? No, we did, because we're the ones who have sinned. Jesus was fully God and fully man. He came as a small child and grew into a man and he was, he was crucified on that cross. He was thoroughly beaten, hung on that cross, and he died. And on the third day, he rose again. And he ascended, went to heaven to be with Jesus. And why did he do all that? Because of his deep love for you and I. And because he wanted to have a relationship with you and me. And that's why Jesus took the punishment that we so deserved, so that we don't have to go through the same. And number four, you can believe in Jesus and be saved from the punishment that you so deserve. You can believe in Jesus. And when you believe in Jesus, it's when you invite Jesus in your heart and you have a relationship with him. And number five, those who know Jesus should be witnesses. That you encourage the friend, the person you are witnessing to, that after they have invited Jesus into their hearts, just like you, 
because you'll be witnessing. They too need to witness about the love of God that they have experienced and the forgiveness of Jesus that they have experienced. Those who know Jesus um, should witness. And we've talked about sharing Jesus with other people, but our lives should also reflect that we have Jesus in our hearts. We should witness to others by how we live, by how we talk, because it's easier to share Jesus with somebody else with our words. But if our lives do not reflect what we are talking about, then it's hard for somebody to believe in something that you yourself are not practicing. Some people can look at your life and say, something is different about you. Okay, then God gives you an opportunity for you to actually tell them, it's Jesus and it's because me, I'm a witness by how I live and I live for Jesus to make Jesus happy. Okay, are we together? Okay, good. Um, then why do we witness? Because as we said from Mark, it's a command. God commands us to, that we should go to the world and preach the good news to all creation. Now, let's go through the witness part one more time so that you can remember it, so that it's easy for you to remember, okay? Number one, what did we say? God loves you. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, for I have loved you with an everlasting love, that you will tell them God loves you. Number two, your sin keeps you away from, from God. And number three, God sent his only son, Jesus, to take the punishment that we so deserved. And number four, that you can believe in Jesus and be saved from the punishment that you deserve. And number five, those who know Jesus should be witnesses. Now let's go back to the word grow because our lesson for today said that a follower of Jesus grows. And just like a plant, you know how when a plant starts as a seed, what does it require? Air, sunlight, and what else? And water to grow. In the same way as a believer, there are things that you need so that you can grow. And we're using the acronym GROW because it's easy to remember. I'm sure you've planted something in your life. Have you? Please say yes. Whether it was maize, beans, flower, rose, I don't know what you planted. Eucalyptus? Eucalyptus. How do you plant eucalyptus? That's a good question. I should research on it. Um, but anyways, that I'm sure it's a seed. It starts as a seed and then grows to whatever you've planted it to be. If you plant, let's say, uh, maize or beans and you keep, keep it in your house, is it going to grow? Nah. Why? Because there is no sunlight. What about if you grow something and then you don't water it or you put too much water? It's going to either dry or it's going to be too wet and then it's going to rot. So the, everything needs to be, to be perfect for any plant to grow. In the same way as a believer, unless the four things that we talked about in grow and g we talked about going to church and um, r we talked about reading your bible and praying O we've talked about obedience and w we've talked about witnessing unless those four things are functioning and they're okay in your life then you cannot grow as a believer how are you going to grow when you're not talking to god how are you going to grow when you're not reading the bible how are you going to grow if you're not fellowshipping with other believers here in church or even at as we say, the church is you and I. The church is not the, bu the building. How are you going to grow when you're not sharing Jesus with other people? You've kept him for yourself. Jesus is mine and mine alone. No, we can't live like that. Then you see when you're keeping Jesus for yourself, it means that you're not witnessing and you're walking in disobedience. And you've said letter O is for obedience. We are going to hear God's word and we are going to obey. And today God is telling us we are going to witness, we are going to obey, we are going to do all those things because our desire is to live like the wise man. Our desire is that God will call us the wise men who built their house on the rock. And when anything comes our way that we will be able to stand strong because our foundation is correct. Are we together? And our memory verse is very simple for today and it comes from 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 and this is what the Bible says for our love for God means that we obey his commands and his commands are not too hard for us for our love for God means that we obey his commands and his commands are not too hard for us 1 John chapter 5 verse 3 simple quick to memorize you know how the Bible says in in Psalms that your word have I hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. That's why we keep insisting, memorize scripture, put God's word in your heart, that you may not sin against God. Because it's easy to sin when you don't know. 
But if you know what the scripture says, then it's easy to obey. And 1 John 5 verse 3 is saying, for our love for God means that we obey his commands. Why do we obey his commands? Because we love God. You know when you have a best friend that you care deeply about, you do things that make them happy. You, do things, you don't do things that irritate them or um, you don't take their things without permission. You don't, you don't tear their homework and put them in trouble, set them up for punish, being punished for something they didn't do. No, you protect them in the same way. For our love for God means that we obey his commands and his commands are not too hard for us. And you know what else? He gives us strength to actually obey his commands because he loves us deeply. Are we together? Amazing. Now we've come to the end of our lesson and I hope you've learned a thing or two and I hope you're going to work in obedience this week and I hope that your relationship with God is going to grow because you've interacted with God and you're going to spend more time with him. We are going to pray but before we get there, I think it's very important for me to remind you about your crafts and I hope you printed them in advance. If you didn't, please remind whoever it is, whether it's your mom, your dad, your uncle, whoever, should be printing them for you in advance. Tell them they can access it through the Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road website page or if you come to Nairobi Chapel Ngong Road, you should be able to pick the hard copies of the craft. But if you have them, please have a good time enjoying. Why do we do crafts? We do them because it's a nice and fun way to remind us of what the lesson was about. For the six and sevens, your devotions are always at the back of your crafts. So ensure you read during every day, there's just one verse that you're supposed to be reading. And I pray that you'll... So we, we, remember we said we are reading God's word. So it starts there, you read that, that one verse. But for the 8th to 11th, you have a booklet for the entire month that you go through every day. And actually there is a witness activity that you're supposed to be doing, sharing with your friends what you are learning through the scriptures that you're reading. Are we together? Excellent. Now I think it's time for us to pray. As you said, we are going to God every day and it starts even now. So let us pray. Uh, dear Jesus, thank you for your word. Um, even as we desire to grow, as we desire to connect with you, to share Jesus with other people, I pray, and even to obey you, I pray that you will give us the strength because sometimes it's not going to be easy. But thank you because you say that you're going to help us to walk in a way that honors you and brings you joy. So we commit each and every boy and girl who is listening to this lesson today and who desires to have a relationship with you. And if there is any at home who would like to invite Jesus into their hearts, I pray that... Uh, your Holy Spirit will do the convicting and that they will invite Jesus into their, into their hearts. So watch over them, watch over their hearts, watch over their week and uh, be good to them and uh, be Lord over their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. I hope you have an amazing, amazing week as you go and practice grow, that you're going to grow as a believer. So bye-bye. See you and have a good Sunday. to everyone go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone go into all the world and preach the good news to to wear.